looking at Daisy girl. Happy parts day Saturday from Alex and I. No, grammatically that's incorrect. It's from me and Alex. Because if you remove Alex, then it would be happy Saturday from I. And so. I and Alex. No. Alex and I. Me and Alex. Uh -uh. Yes. Uh -huh. If you remove the other clause, if I take out your name, if I said happy Saturday from I, that's not correct. You'd say happy Saturday from me. So happy Saturday from me and Alex. This crate belongs to me and Alex. Me and Alex though, but it's Alex and I are wrong. going to Rogers. Because if you take out Alex, then it's, it's wrong, I though, because going to people Rogers. People will say you're trying to say me and Alex. What do you mean? It is me and Alex. <laughs> Let's try that again. Happy Saturday, happy parts day. We're going over to Grandpa Rogers right now to do some more work on what do you know, Alex is 440. And so we've got some more parts listed <laughs> in the boxes over here. Some cool stuff from 440 Source. Little things to get the, the rest of the car put together. Um, stuff for the front nice pulley off. assembly. Well, yeah, you're mixing videos now, babe. <laughs> mixing content here. Stuff to get the 440 finished up here. Finally get the crankshaft balanced. In order to properly balance the crankshaft, you want to have your fluid dampener on the front and then your flex plate on the back. So this way, all the components that are attached to that crankshaft, ultimately when it's assembled as a final engine, are on there and we get everything perfectly harmonized and synchronized. So, well, how you doing? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, let's throw this stuff over in the car and head over to Rogers. All right, big moments here. Got the dampener out. Absorb the harmonics. There's the crank. Okay. Right. Just a dampener bolt. Okay. They have your bolt, crank keyway, flex plate, and then the crank itself. And Roger's going through and entering in all the information on the computer. And essentially what we're going to do is replicate all of the weight of all the pistons now and the rods and rings and all the other components that go through the rotating assembly. And then they're going to be replicated on the crank under each crank journal with bob weights. And then those will go on there. And as this thing rotates around, we can determine where it is and out of balance and then we can remove material out of the crank as needed and then get this thing perfectly synchronized and balanced so flex plate will go back here on the back the crank just like it would sticking out of the back side of the engine when it's assembled and then our harmonic balancer will go here on the front and then that's where that little keyway goes right here on the end so that one two and three with the flex plate make up the three pieces besides all the bob weights for the rotating assembly. Roger's quickly removing the little triangle etch marks on the end of the crank bolt just so this way when it sits on the magnet part of the machine for the balancer those don't get in the way so just cut them quick on the lathe. Now it's nice and smooth and surfaced like that. The cool stuff in this engine room here. This 302 is pretty looking motor. This 403 Oldsmobile engine over here, and I think this was a straight six Chevy. And now we're getting our fixture set up so this way, once we determine where we need to drill on the crank to take some material out, it can get set up right in here and lay down and get drilled. in surfaced and polished all the journals are on the crank from all those nice chamfers on the oiling holes you excited babes getting everything balanced that should be that's right always the fat one when you're looking for skinny one <laughs> yeah right five 39.7, we gotta be at 12.69.8. 9.8. And that's what each one of the bob weights will weigh? Uh, each half. Right, okay, yeah, right, because they're split in two. Mm
right as we get down to the end here, we just gotta trim a couple little custom shims, aka washers, and get that 169 right where we need it. But do you determine just to make sure that each the openings are the same so this way it's like equally yeah, really clamped? Yeah, close. Okay. When do you set them both on like the same plane? Are there, mm -hmm. okay. I should say all of them. Yes, sir. It's like if you turn the bob weight with like this part up here, mm -hmm. that would go oh, That would be wrong. Going nuts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then we're just ensuring that all of the bob weights have equal openings and they're set equally balanced on the journals themselves with checking with the micrometer. Makes sense. So we balance it, just the crank the bob weights, and then we just mm -hmm. check the Put balance. The back end or front end, it doesn't matter whichever one on, on and then come back and do it again. And if it changes it very much, then you start working on the, uh, the pieces that you put on. Okay, so then we would alter the flywheel or the mm -hmm. flex plate or the damper? Okay. sound you heard is just this oil and hole here catching on the little roller bearing as it's bouncing off of that hole opening.
and yeah. anything is going to cause a vibration. Right. We'll throw it off. We keep running into the issue with the oiling hole catching on this bearing, and you can actually see right here, it leaves a little imprint of the circle of the oiling hole right there where it's catching. And that's going to cause it to bounce as it's balancing and going to throw off, obviously, the entire process. So we got to figure that out real quick, and then we'll get this going good. And this is the reason why we surfaced that bolt before us so this way. It's got a nice flat mating surface between those two because otherwise that bolt's usually got a little triangle pattern on there which kind of gets in the way. Give her another go. Yeah. So does the computer do all of the analyzation of where the imbalance spot is? Yep. Okay. On the left. Yeah. So you roll this around until this turns green. Uh-huh. And that's tell you exactly where you gotta take material like the, out. Okay. What's that and second and little that tells you what this then it tells you well depending on what size drill bit you do it with this is this is ninety three grams out. Mm hmm Point eight, ninety three point eight, almost the same on both ends. Okay. And that's referring to just the the both end counterweights? Mm -hmm. Believe that or not, so you rotate it 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Which is here where you can't put any weight. Right. But if you could... reading both ends of the crank. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you were able to add weight there, mm -hmm. which we put 15 grams there. Right, now I went so down to 80. It down so it's telling you, okay. you know, you double check and that it's telling you what you, right. it is correct. So you back to where we were before. Yeah. Crank is on the mill right now, and then we're gonna take out that 80, 90 grams we were looking at over on the balancer and throw it back on there and see if that's what we needed.
this forged steel is that stuff pretty hard to cut through. Yeah, it's tough. Hmm. Much more tougher than the cast, like a cast prank would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The newer stuff is nice, right? It is nice. Tear the hell out of your drills. Would those existing holes be just done like at the factory? Mm -hmm. those? Okay. But the weight of the rods and the weight of the pistons and everything's changed, you know, with what we're building over versus what the factory has done. So Correct, yeah. That was set to balance the factory engine and, and changed everything, obviously. Mm -hmm. Forge crank materials heavier. Okay. So you don't want to just go blasting out and <laughs> take too much. <laughs> left field. Yeah. It's going to sneak up on them. Okay. All right. Take cool. Her, take her back and set her in her nest again. Back to it. Back over, let's do it. It's better than three too many. Oh, we only lost, took out three grams? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because yeah, it was what, like 80 before? Yeah. And then the other go one was like 90. Go back in the history and we'll tell you where you started out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. So that so much. You have to remember it all on your own. Yeah. I definitely could use that help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right there is worth three grams, mm -hmm. essentially. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good amount of material that's gotta come out. Better to start easy, like you said. Yeah. And just like when we were balancing other stuff, it's a game of rinse and repeat now. Take some more material out, go back to the balancer, give it another shot, and keep playing with it until we get there. Let's update you guys. We've gone through, I think, nine or ten iterations of putting it on the balancer, taking it over to the bend mill, drilling out some material, rinse and repeat, and we're getting close. We've got about 38 grams to go on each side right now, so coming in, maybe another couple cuts, and we should be about where we need to be. All right, we just made another cut. Hopefully this one gets us pretty close. We had 38 grams and 35 grams the last time. It's no fun for the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard the man. We'll come back and finish this off another day because it's getting late on Saturday. So we'll catch you then. <laughs>